I don't want to set the world on fire. Hello everybody, my name is Zul, and welcome to Modding Volo 3. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at weather and lighting mods to make the wasteland look a little bit better. Uh, this could be in the form of darker nights, or maybe uh, some rain or snow. Uh, or just uh, changing the way that the sky looks so that it doesn't have that green, smudgy smear all over it. Uh, so without further ado, let's take a look at a couple of options, and then I'll show you how to install each and every one of them. The first thing I'm going to address is why install a weather mod, and uh, put simply, uh, well, the vanilla game doesn't have the greatest uh, nights. They're they're perfectly visible, I mean, there's, there's it's not really dark, it, it looks sort of like late evening, there's no real threat to it, and I, I find this a little unimmersive. Uh, there's also a, a kind of a green tint uh, over the screen. You may not notice this uh, in some of my comparison shots, but if you go down into the DC wastes, uh, it can be pretty apparent when you're there. Uh, and uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense for the sky to be so uh, smudged over with that green filter. And of course, finally, uh, it's the lack of weather that's actually in the game, uh, which I find a little unimmersive as well, and these mods will uh, remedy this. Uh, there's going to be three main mods that I'm going to be covering in this video. Uh, Bellout, Project Reality, and Dynamic Weather. And then there's going to be uh, one additional mod that uh, actually supplements some of these mods. And that mod is Enhanced Weather, uh, Rain and Snow. So without further ado, let's take a look at our first mod and my three comparison shots. Now, the first mod that we're going to be looking at is one of my personal favorites. It's a mod that I use in Skyrim as well as in all the Fallout games, and uh, I, I really do enjoy this mod, and that mod is Project Reality. Uh, now, Project Reality is different from the uh, following two mods in that this is the only plugin you're going to need to have and install, so don't, don't worry about installing anything else. Uh, don't install the enhanced weather, they're not compatible, but you don't need it. That's because this mod contains weather, uh, several different weather systems and cycles, lighting. Uh, also effects, you can see me here, I'm demonstrating the uh, adaptive uh, vision setting that you can actually enable or disable in the mod if you don't like. And a couple of other features such as radioactive rain and uh, the dark wasteland plugin. Uh, this mod also includes uh, thunderstorms and rain and snow as well as a ton of different cloud options. Uh, there is different levels of uh, night, and that can actually be disabled too with an in-game item. So if you find the nights a little bit too dark, you can actually tweak them uh, to however you would specifically like them. As you can see here, this is very dark, but that's mostly due to YouTube's ability to darken the scene. I can actually see fairly well uh, far away if I sort of focused, but uh, I like it that way. To install Project Reality, it's uh, actually really, really simple. Navigate along to the file section on the Nexus and download with Manager for Project Reality. Once you've done that, it's simply a matter of going over to the Project Reality uh, file on the Nexus and activating it with Nexus Mod Manager. This is a really quick process and uh, all the customization is actually done in game. This mod is not compatible or needs to be compatible with the Enhanced Weather mod. Uh, Basically, they don't need to go together because Project Reality does its own thing. Uh, one thing though, weather mods, uh, you pretty much always want those to load last. So they are pretty much the bottom of your load order. The only thing that should be below them is your merged patch, so keep that in mind. Uh, running Boss will handle it with these mods, so you don't really need to worry too much about that, but just keep that in mind. The next set of mods that I'm going to be covering are Fellout and Enhanced Weather. Uh, these two work perfectly well as a pair, and uh, together I think that they're an awesome combination. They're a good alternative to Project Reality if you don't personally like that mod. Uh, now what they do is, uh, well, Fellout changes the uh, lighting and the sky. It neutralizes all the indoor lighting, it removes all the green fog, and it removes the green tint in the sky, giving it a bit more of a Sahara Desert sort of kind of dried out area land. Uh, it doesn't add weather of its own, but as you can see here, Enhanced Weather is uh, compatible with it, and I'm showing off a setting in this which allows you to change things. Uh, going over to Enhanced Weather, that adds rain and snow to the game, and as you can see there is a feature called Radioactive Rain. Uh, this might be a little difficult to see on YouTube because Fallout does make it very dark, but as you can see there is uh, some thunder and lightning, which I think is just awesome. It makes the game look different and it uh, requires a big change of strategy if you plan on going out in the rain, as it could give you a lot of rads. 
Uh, as we can see, uh, there's a nice weather system here in the uh, daytime. This is uh, an overcast sort of feeling that's uh, coming from the enhanced weather and effects. And as you can also see, the sky has been neutralized, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the sun's been changed just a little bit, but uh, overall I think this is a good atmospheric change to the game. Uh, this mod author also recommends a couple of other mods that I personally use when I'm using these kind of mods. Things like uh, lighting overhaul for Megaton and a streetlight mod that sort of shows some other things here. As you can see, there's a little bit more here on the screen. Uh, that was just some of the settings and the ability to change the weather. Uh, there's an item featured in Enhanced Weather and Effects that you can actually get. Uh, you either start the game with it or you can do a bit of a quest to unlock it. But essentially what it is, is it allows you to change the weather or reset the weather to your liking. Again, this might end up being a little bit darker than it is on YouTube, and there are plugins that uh, can actually make it brighter if you don't like the darker nights, but you do want to remove the tint. So that is actually an option, just uh, I prefer the darker nights. These are at the absolute darkest settings that I could get them to, uh, because on my screen, uh, there is actually pretty good visibility. Uh, but it is an excuse to use your Pip-Boy light that, uh, as you can see here, works very well. Installing Fallout is also very easy. Uh, to install Fallout, navigate along to the file section on the Fallout page on the Nexus. Download the main file with Manager. If you have Broken Steel, you are also required to download the DLC support. Uh, I believe this requires all the DLC, but uh, if you have Broken Steel, you pretty much have to use it so you're out of luck on Fallout in that regard. Um, then you have to download the 123 uh, hotfix. Uh, this just fixes a couple of little issues with the mod. There is also a greener grass plugin, uh, something that I don't personally use, but uh, I would recommend if you kind of like that sort of thing. I don't really like to use it, but it is very immersive and it does make sense that some grass would have regrown after 200 years. Uh, this mod I uh, paired with the Enhanced Weather mod, so go over to the file section of that mod and download the recommended version. This, this version can be downloaded with Manager as it is faux mod packaged. Uh, these other two versions uh, you don't want to do because they, they, they have to be installed manually, so just, just download this one. Uh, there's also a, a hotfix, uh, you should uh, download that one as well. Uh, and finally, there's another file that you need with this one, and that is the Radioactive Rain Fix. If you don't want to use the Radioactive Rain, which is actually a fairly buggy feature, sometimes you'll just get radioactivity when it's not raining, uh, you don't need to worry about that. But if you do use it, uh, you can try out this Radioactive Rain Fix right here, uh, just download it with Manager, and it will actually fix uh, the radioactive rain problem allegedly. I have experienced a small problem with this, but I think it was because my uh, mod was not patched with the hotfix at the time of uh, playing. So give that one a try. Once all of those files are downloaded and in the Nexus mod manager, uh, you simply have to activate them. First, starting with fellout, the main file. Once that is activated, uh, you then have to click on the DLC support for Fallout, clicking no when it asks you to update. Then uh, the Fallout hotfix, which you will say no and then yes to all to. That will install very quickly as well. Then the enhanced rain and snow mod, uh, as well as the hotfix, and the radioactive rain fix. Now you'll see this one actually has a scripted install. Uh, and that is important to note. Now we haven't seen too many of these yet, and uh, they're more they're more uh, prominent in uh, Skyrim and New Vegas, but they're still here. And uh, one of the things is the radioactive snow and rain plugin. Uh, now if you if you don't want to use that, you can actually uncheck it, and then you don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, there's also a sneak bonus during storms and weather sounds in the interiors. I keep these on because I think they're pretty cool. There's a known Pitch Black Nights uh, plugin, but you have to remember that if you're installing it with Fallout, it already makes the nights dark, so I think that this will cause a bit of a conflict, so I wouldn't recommend clicking on it. Uh, once you install, it'll just take a few moments to activate. Uh, and then, uh, yes, it'll ask you this. You click yes to all because it's just overriding some uh, textures that Fallout had for the sky. Uh, once that's done, you're actually uh, ready to go. Uh, just make sure that you add the hotfix and the radioactive rain fix. I'm not sure if the hotfix is actually necessary with this one. I have not been using it, but it might fix uh, part of the radioactive rain problem. So you have to check that one out on your own. 
Now we move on to the final set of mods that I'm going to be covering, uh, and that is Zephyr's Dynamic Weather and the Enhanced Weather mod yet again, because these two are also compatible. As you can see, this mod doesn't make it as dark. Uh, what this mod does is actually focus a lot more on the weather. It adds a bunch of new and reworked weather and cloud types, and it completely changes the way the climate works there. Um, there is radioactive rain in this mod as well, and there are also sandstorms, which can be configurable to do damage to your armor. Uh, this mod actually has the disadvantage of coming in way too many plugins, so if you are sensitive to that kind of thing, I have to warn you that this mod does have a lot of plugins. Although there are some merged patches, you are going to end up with a lot of ESPs. Uh, this mod does have a lot of different advantages, one being that since it's all split up, there's a lot of customization that you can get. Uh, this mod also, as you can see, features something called the Weather Machine that lets you completely change and control the weather. Uh, this, I believe, is uh, available via Quest, or you can start the game with it depending on a plugin that you have installed. Um, and what this does is it allows you to simply customize and change the weather to your uh, see fit. Uh, if you look up in the corner of the screen, you can see that it's giving you a weather forecast. Uh, it also shows you the progress towards the next weather cycle. This can be uh, changed in the options menu, but it does give you an idea of what's coming if you don't like it. Uh, here we are in the day, uh, and as you can see, it does look a lot different than the other mods. This one, this one is very much different, and there again is the change in weather uh, symbol that we can see right there. Uh, it's it's going to take a little while for the weather to change in this mod. It doesn't happen as suddenly, but... Uh, it really does change things, especially up in the clouds. Uh, and now we're going to take a quick look over at the nighttime, uh, which you can see is a lot darker. Uh, it's also a very dark night mod. I have this again on the maximum darkness that it can be, but there are plugins that uh, allow you to disable this and just have the regular nights and just have the addition of the weather. So you have to keep that in mind. The final mod in the uh, series that I was covering is actually one that I was very reluctant to cover at all, uh, and that is because it's uh, very involved on the install, but I thought that I would do it anyway, although uh, you may uh, have to take this with a grain of salt because there's a lot of complexity to this and uh, incompatibility, so I may make a slight error in this because I personally don't use this mod. I have been trying it out for a while, so it's, uh, it seemed to work alright, uh, but if there's any problems, it's probably my fault. Uh, this mod has to be downloaded manually. So download the dynamic mod manually right here. Uh, and uh, I've done that already, brought it to my desktop, and I've extracted it uh, just to save some time. Now if you open it up, uh, you'll see here there's a bunch of different things. There's the ESM, uh, that's the main file and it's necessary, and then there's the main ESP. There's textures, which are in the correct place, but then there's a bunch of optional files. DLC, Dynamic Sneak Bonus, Night Eye, Rain, Sandstorms, and the Weather Machine. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a new folder called uh, Data. Now I've already done this here, and I have it packaged exactly the way you want it. But we're going to go through everything one by one in this new folder, and uh, we're going to create a full mod structure. So. I'll open up this other folder and we're going to work from here. Now I know one thing that you definitely need is the ESM. You can't use the mod without it. Now before you go overhead and move the ESP, uh, I have to warn you that if you have the DLC, there is a main and DLC merged patch for if you have all the DLC. And I would recommend using this if you have it like I do, because this saves you on ESPs and you don't want to overload your load order. The next option is the dynamic sneak bonus. Uh, if you would like to add this, uh, then you can uh, throw that in here. Remember to check the README for each of these. Each of them uh, shows you something uh, important, uh, uh, like compatibility and stuff. The night eye files here are all really different. Uh, I don't use these files. Uh, basically, they're for people who don't like darker nights, though. And there's a whole series of them. I'm not going to be using them. Read the README and it'll show you exactly which one you want. Some of them are compatible with Rain. Some of them are compatible with Operation Anchorage. That's OA. Uh, so you got to keep that in mind depending on what DLC you have. 
the next one is rain uh, and this file is actually if you have the the enhanced rain plugin is only needed if we are using the enhanced uh, rain and snow plugin which I showed with fellow so if you're using that you are going to require this file here to uh, use some compatibility uh, finally there's the sandstorms file you can actually have the Sandstorms and armor damage. This is an FOSE thing where it actually damages your armor a little bit. If you'd like to add that, uh, add one or the other of these to this folder. Finally, the weather machine. Uh, that's the thing that lets you control and change the weather. There's a quest version, a vendor version, and a version that you start the game with. Uh, I personally used this one just so I could test out the mod, but if you'd like to do a quest or find it from a vendor, uh, that's uh, perfectly fine. Uh, it is actually kind of built into the game fairly immersively. It's sort of a vault tech thing, allegedly. Uh, and once you have all that sorted out, you got to also bring the textures over here. So I'm going to look at my uh, pre-done full mod structure here. Uh, that's this one. And this is essentially kind of the same kind of thing you want to do. You want to have all the files that you put in here, on outside, and then you want your textures with your sky and whatever. You want them like that. Then, using a program like uh, 7z or WinRAR, I would recommend 7zip, add to archive. Uh, okay. And this will create a 7z archive. This one's called data. Uh, you're then going to rename it to something a little bit better. Uh, I used dynamic weather. If we open up this, we will see that this actually contains... Go away, WinRAR. This actually contains the exact same things. Then you open up your Nexus Mod Manager, add mod from file. Once they're in your Nexus Mod Manager, activate the mods and you're good to go. Just a quick note for everybody here, uh, these mods are all mutually exclusive, so you can't have Fallout and Project Reality or Dynamic Weather installed at the same time. Pick one of them and stick with one of them and you're not going to run into any problems. Uh, but now that dynamic weather is there, uh, we have to navigate along to our plugins and let's just check out to make sure that it worked. Uh, and as you can see, it did. Clicking on this, we can see that uh, the rain ESP requires an enhanced weather, rain and snow. So make sure that that one is also activated, I've done so, and then you should be good. As always, run boss, it will load things out. Your weather mods, they're pretty much always at the end, uh, so keep that in mind. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate the views. As always, please consider subscribing to my channel uh, and keep a lookout for uh, some of my other modding series. Uh, any feedback in the comments is always appreciated, and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, one quick note, uh, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I now have a Twitter account so I can help you out with some mod installs and uh, take some of your feedback there. It's just a bit of an easier way for me to get in touch with anybody who wants to get feedback from me because the YouTube comments are terrible. Anyway, sorry about that. Have an excellent day.